I can face tomorrow Because he left All fear is gone Yes it is, yes it is Because I know Yes, I know who holds the future. Yes, I do. And life is worth that living just because he lives. God sent his son. Yes, he did. Oh, they called him Jesus. He came to love. He will and forgive. By my pardon, yes, he did. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because Because I know, yes, I do. He holds the future. And love is worth the living Because. Big one. Oh, but greater still. This calm. This calm assurance. This child can face. This child can face. Because I know, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. 
I know that he holds, holds the future, and love is worth the living just because he I know from St. Kitts, beautiful island. I'm missing the islands right now as we are scheduled for another snowstorm. <laughs> oh, I'm missing the sunshine. I'm missing the heat. 96 degrees in the shade. <laughs> it sounds great to me right about now. I know, yes, I know. He holds the my future. Thank God, yes, he does. Good night, Reverend Camille. How is St. Kitts? How is Nevis? How is Tortola? How is Anguilla? How is Antigua? How is Trinidad and Tobago? How is Barbados? How is St. Martin? How is St. Croix? I would say Bart's. Hmm. I would say Lucia. Oh, to God be the glory. Island life, eh? Worth the living. Nothing as good as it. <sighs> Just because. Desiree Lane. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. God bless you. He lives. What I'm going to give now is a definition for the word lead. I'm uh, whetting your appetite with regards to the leadership training that's coming from Monday uh, and 25 Mondays, every Monday for 26 times, we're going to be meeting. So I have in front of me here my Living Webster's Dictionary. This thing has got about 40 pounds. <laughs> But I love to define words so that we can all be on the same page. I have not yet defined leadership, but I'm going to define the word lead. So you'll get the gist as to where we are going. And the purpose of these few nights prior to, before Monday, is to tickle your fancy, to stir your appetite, to get you, the man said, thirsty. <laughs> instead of thirsty he said thirsty i'm getting them thirsty so i'm getting you thirsty on the word lead leadership ya ya re re here i go lead lead to guide or conduct by showing the way when you're a leader you're a guide and you guide and conduct by showing the way. That means you're out in front. You're the example. Showing the way. To lead. To show the route, the course, to command. To govern. To direct. To hold first place in order. You're the leader of the race. You're holding first place in the order of things. Now notice that word govern is in there. That's what, where we get Genesis 1, 26. 
Let them have dominion, mastery, governorship, rulership, administrative control. When God created man, the first thing he said about man is, he's going to be a leader like me. All men are leaders in their area of skill, giftedness, and expertise. We are all born to lead. We are all not going to lead everybody, but we are all going to lead in our area of giftedness, uh, leanings, bent, proclivities, propensities, inherent abilities and graces. There are some things that we can naturally do without even being trained in it. Dogs don't go to bark school. Fish don't go to swim school. Ducks don't go to quack school. Bees don't go to honey school. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord. To command, to govern, to direct. To induce or influence. To induce, to incite, to pull along to your way of thinking. To influence. Leadership does have an element of influence in there. But it's not all just influence. To initiate and guide. To compel to motion, to direct, as in the playing of music, there's a conductor of the band. He's leading the band. He's directing where the song, who's going to play high, low, ya, ya. To cause, to spend, or endure. He led his wife a sad life. She was enduring. To go before and show the way. To go before. And show the way to go ahead. And show the way. That's what leaders are supposed to do. Go ahead and show the way. To have precedence or preeminent. Pre. The prefix pre tells you it's before. It's going ahead. To have a position of authority. To be chief. Commander or director. To conduct. To induce, to lead, the act or function of leading, guidance, direction, precedence, the first and foremost, in advance of others. You are in advance of others. You are ahead of the others. You are leading the pack. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put away this big heavy dictionary that weighs a ton. Now, a lot of people do not believe they can lead because they have been told that all their lives. And for the most part, they have been told that by people who hate them, who can't stand them, who, who don't believe that they have any such ability. There are people in this world who believe that black people should not lead anything because they don't have the ability to lead. Only they can lead. That's that song. Me must say... Only me must say. Those who know the song know the song. And I have been told that ad nauseum. If I had a dollar for every time I was told that, I'd be a very rich man. You guys are good at basketball and athletics, but you can't administrate. You can't lead. You can't be in charge of anything. Because y'all don't have that ability. And they have been brainwashed by others who themselves were the colonialists. The colonizers of that part of the world. And so when your enemy tells you what you can and cannot do, you ought to ignore him. Why? Because he's afraid that you will find out who you really are. They know we are leaders. We taught them maths and all the other stuff. They know. They know that. It's a fact that they know that. Columbus learned to sail because he was taught by one of us. They know that. That when he came to these lands, he meant people that look like us. They know that. Instead of calling them what they were, they call them Indians to make a whole mess of the whole thing. They are good at lying. Most of the history that I learned in school, in high school, 
was uh, retouched, redone history. The history was a lie. When you tell me that uh, I come from a, a genealogy of slaves, what are you telling me? Who was I before you enslaved us and tried to make us believe we were slaves? <coughs> West Indian history begins with the Middle Passage where the colonizers were taking us from where we were to the Caribbean and to America and other parts of the world. But the question they don't answer is what were we before they came and met us there? We were kings! We were the creators of the pyramids of Egypt. We built it. Most of their places of interest are filled with artifacts they stole from Egypt, which is in Africa. And so, it is a disgrace that our people have allowed themselves to be fooled by their enemies for so long. It is a disgrace that our people I've been told that everybody else should be in charge of them and they can't be in charge of themselves. It is a disgrace to our people that we do not believe that we should lead. We're always following some other race. They must always be in charge. And when we are in charge, we sabotage each other because they get us to sabotage each other by pretending like that guy can't lead. And what they mean is, I want to usurp his authority and take his place. And we don't see that. And so they always have some traitor in our ranks, traitor in our midst, trying to sell us out to the light skin guy, to the brown skin guy, to the other skin guy, because they believe if your skin is dark, you cannot lead. And that's the mentality that we have to fight and understand clearly from scripture that we were born with the ability to lead, that leadership is our God given ability our God-given right, our God-given destiny. But even though God has given us the ability, the proclivity, the propensity, it is up to us to make a decision as to whether we will lead or no. Leadership then becomes a decision. You've got to decide. To not decide is to decide. To not decide is to decide. When you say, I'm not going to decide, you have made a decision. The decision is you will not decide. Leadership is a decision. You're going to have to come out of your comfort zone and step out of, step off of your duff and get jiggy with it. Leadership is misunderstood because people believe you have to be charismatic to lead. You don't have to be charismatic to lead. Some of the most boring speeches and the most boring people I know are in charge of nations right now. They are leading nations right now. And they have the most boring personality. They can't give a proper speech. If they had to save their lives, they couldn't talk to save their lives. They are boring. And yet, they are the president. They are the prime minister. They are the king. They are the man in charge of the nation. Boring as watching paint dry. You don't have to be charismatic to lead. Leadership is misunderstood. And some people believe only a few can lead. And they have to be born with certain inherent abilities. Let me tell you something. All of us are born with certain inherent abilities. All of us are born with leadership capacity, leadership ability, leadership genes. Leadership is in our genealogy. It's in our bloodline. Oh, rock a shocker. Rock a shocker. You were born to lead. Stop following all the time. You were born to lead. Stop making them tell you that you are not a leader. You were born to lead. Stop making them tell you that only their race can handle money. Only their race can be in charge. I used to be in a religious organization. And the only people in that religious organization that can be leaders are people from another race. Only they must lead. And for the last 60 years that I've known that organization, only their people have been in charge. You could have a PhD and they could have a, a bachelor's or a diploma. And their diploma is way more powerful than your degree, your PhD. And they're leading on to now they're still leading that nation, that religious group. And if you say uh, the church is guilty of racism, oh, no, 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 Rev, no, 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 no. And yet they have a sense of entitlement that only they must be in charge. And they will fight and lie. And I've seen them do it. Fight and lie to make sure that only one of their guides, one of their person, 
one of their race. Only they can lead. I've seen it happen over and over and repeated time. The worse is leading, the better. Leadership is misunderstood because people believe you have to have charisma. You Only a few can lead. Only the light skin can lead. Only the blue eyes can lead. Only the blonde hair can lead. Only the fair skin can lead. If you're dark, you can't be a leader because God has cursed you. And the teaching out there that blacks are cursed, that's another dimension of satanic lies, the likes of which I'm going to have to address another time. But if I go off on that tangent, I'll be chasing that rabbit down the hole. Many of us are not leaders because we allow people who hate us to decide who can lead and who cannot lead. And we will quicker join another group and help another group against our own people because we don't believe that we can lead. All of us who are born with an inherent ability and gift, with talents and abilities to lead, and we can serve up our gifts, our talent. We can lead in the area of our giftedness. And so, Bob Marley leads in reggae. And so, Francisco Slinger, a.k.a. the Mighty Sparrow, leads in Calypso. And so, LeBron James leads in basketball. And so, are you feeling me now? Tiger Woods leads in golf. And so, Serena Williams leads in lawn tennis. And so, others are scientists and intellectuals. We have people that look like us in every fabric of society, leading in every place. Sometimes during the Black History Month, I just have to laugh because a lot of things that were invented, that the whole world is using and being blessed by, was invented by one of us. And it's only during that time of the, of the year, Black History Month, that you get to know some of the inventions because they're telling us we don't have the intelligence and the intellect to do anything. That we did not make anything in society. We produce nothing proper. I've read books that said that. That every other race were able to do something in the world except the black race. And it's all a bold-faced, satanic, demonic lie. Having said that, let me give you some good music and then I'll get on to the teaching for tonight. Jesus, sing to the Father. Father, 
In many of the Old and New Testament scriptures, when God wants to bring a person out into the forefront, into the specific assignment and call to leadership, they will receive an encounter. Come, follow me. Come, and I will make you fishers of men. While you were under the juniper tree, I saw you, behold, an Israelite, in whom there is no guile. Zacchaeus, come down, for this day I must come to your house. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Moses, take off the shoe from off thy feet, for the place wherein you stand is holy ground. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Therefore arise, Yaya Ray Ray. Leaders were all encountered by the voice of God, a vision from God, an angel of God, a burning bush that burnt and was not consumed. It was a moment in time where God was separating the eagles from the carrion crows, the lions from the sheep, the leader. From the masses. And through the years. Our theologians have pondered on the question. Of leadership. Of people that are called. Now what has happened in the church world in particular. And in the secular world. People with no talent for the job. Have weaseled themselves into areas of leadership. Most people that want to be involved in politics is not for the interest of the country. It's for their deep pockets that have an insatiable appetite for money. And they want to get into politics so that they can become billionaires overnight. Our politics need to be sanitized. And likewise, the same is in the church. A lot of them want to be pastors and apostles and, and prophets. And so what they do, they weasel their way into ministry, into leadership roles in ministry, Pretending initially that they are humble and they love people and yeah, 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 yeah. It was all an act. It was all a ruse. And as soon as they get into the ministry, the real character of the person comes out. And you see them for who they are. You are a big liar. The devil, the devil. Tell the devil he's a liar. He is a big liar. The devil, the devil, oh, the devil is a liar. And I've seen some people get into ministry, and that's all they are, a big liar. There are people that get into ministry, they have good intentions, but no calling. Good intentions, but no gifting. Good intentions, but no grace for the job. They're a square peg in a wrong hole. God did not call them to that assignment. But there they are, large and in charge. And you can always tell when a person is not called by God. They have a pride about them. An unteachable nature. You can't tell them anything. 
They never listen to advice and instruction. They do whatever they want to do and they do it in the name of God claiming, I'm going to seek the Holy Spirit and let him tell me what to do. Some have entered into ministry by sheer presumption. They are presumptuous. They are not bold. They are brazen. They are not called. They are led. They are misled. And they are dying of lead poisoning because they are misled. God didn't lead them. Their own flesh led them. Their own ego led them. Their own self sense of self-importance led them to want to be in charge of a church, to want to be in charge of a ministry. God have mercy on us. Many scriptures in the Old and New Testament describe the phenomenon of so-called leaders who don't have the call of God. That's why you call them so-called leaders. They're not really leaders. They're so-called leaders because they manipulated themselves into getting into leadership in the church world. And then when they come to the house of God, they want to practice obia. In church, they want to be obia men and obia women. In church, they want to be liars and tigers and bears. Oh my. Liars and tigers and bears. Oh my. And so, in, in the book of Jeremiah, the subject of God's call was very clear. And he warned the people at that time that some of these men that were standing up and speaking in his, in his name, he did not send them. In Jeremiah 23, verse 21, he says, I sent them not, neither commanded them. They shall not prosper. They shall not prosper these people at all. Men that are not sent by God will not prosper the people. They will prosper themselves. And they will use the funds of the church to fund their own little agendas. The house of God can't go, but their house can go. Again, again, bigger and bigger, larger and larger. No carpet in God's house, but their house can get carpet wall to wall in every room, even the washroom, even the kitchen. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Jeremiah 27, verse 15. Jeremiah 23, uh, 28, verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now. The Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest these people to trust in a lie. When the Lord does not send people, they are steeped, they are immersed, they are integrated in big, huge, fat, bold lies. Tons of lies. They prophesy falsely, I have not sent them. Jeremiah 29.9 Ezekiel picked up the same story and Ezekiel said in Ezekiel 13 and 6 They have seen lying and vain divination said the Lord and the Lord had not sent them they have made others to hope that they would conflict that they would conform the word they have made others to hope to hope that God would conform the word but God does not conform a word he that did not send there is something you need to know. There is true leadership and there is false leadership. And you have got to be discerning enough in this day and time to know who you're following and not just to sing and dance to the tune of follow the leader, 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 follow the leader, follow the leader, 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 follow the leader. You don't have to follow the leader because you don't know where the leader is going. The blind can lead. Jesus said if the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into the ditch. There are people who are blind, but they can lead. Who can they lead? They can lead the blind. If you don't have discernment, you'll be going to churches, investing in businesses with leaders that can't lead. Over the years, there have been many people that have come up with all kinds of pyramid schemes. That's just what they are. And they lied to you initially, and when you did find out, your money is tied up for donkey years until you get frustrated and just leave it because it is better to leave it than to have your blood pressure going through the roof as you chase down liars and pyramid schemers 
who lie and lie and lie again. And they lie with the blessings of the powers that be. Because everybody's getting a kickback and everybody's getting a drawback. And everybody's paid above the table and under the table and over the table. And everybody is a Sioux. I'm going to begin tonight's discourse, I thought you began already, by saying God rejects false leadership. And if God rejects false leadership because it will not profit the people, you should also reject false leadership because it will not profit you. False leadership will not profit you. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out that this is false leadership head to tail. But when you take the decision to cut away from false leadership, you'll have some people that are, oh, why? Oh, you know, the Bible talks about forgiveness and you should forgive and pray for the people. No, no, you don't know. You don't know. So stay quiet. God rejects false leadership. Throughout Scripture, we encounter the Lord's judgment. And he usually begins by saying, I have not sent them. Leaders down through the ages have run without a divine call. And God's people have suffered for it. When a person is running in ministry and they don't have a call, God's people will suffer for it. They were not sent by God. Therefore, who sent them? Were they sent by the devil or the will of man? Or did they send themselves? God can send you. The devil can send you. The will of man can send you. Or you can be self-sent. There are four groups of people in leadership around the world. God sent. Devil sent. Man sent and self-sent four leaders in every fabric of society there are four leaders God sent they benefit the people devil sent they destroy the people man sent they are not much of much profit to the people they are profit to themselves self-sent self-sent alone tells you that they are out for their own ambition. They are not out for God's people. They are not out for the people. They send themselves. In the Old Testament, it is a very serious offense to presume upon the office or of any ministry without a divine call. If a man was called to be a priest, he dare not put himself into the king's role. And if a man was called to be a king, he dare not put himself in the priest's role. The roles were clearly distinguished from the other. And you couldn't have an encroachment like when Saul decided to make the sacrifice just because he's king and he thought Samuel was coming late. And as soon as he got done, Samuel the prophet appeared and Samuel said, who gave you permission to do my job? Sometimes you have people in the congregation that want to do your job. Or to tell you how to do your job. When you make certain decisions that seem to be harsh. The ice cream Christians stand up and say, you know, Rev, you're too rough on that. And you, you're you rough on that. And you know, you shouldn't have gone so hard. And you should have handled it another way. And yeah, 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 yeah. They wouldn't stop. They want to tell you how to do your job. Did I tell you how to do your job? No. Well, give me the same respect. I never came over to your workplace and told you how to run your stuff. Don't come over into my workplace and tell me how to run my stuff. And when you tell them that, they, they get annoyed and upset like, you know, you're too proud. Yeah? No man ever entered the presence of the Lord without a divine commandment. God called Moses to come see the burning bush. And the Lord said, take off your shoe for the place where you stand is holy ground. Exodus 3 and 5. God ordained the high priest once a year on the day of atonement to come in his presence in the Holy of Holies. For a man to take upon himself that job was literally to take his life into his own hand. These jackals that want to lead the community and the congregation. To them I say, die jackal, die. In the same manner it is presumptuous for a person who is not called by God to go and say he is the Lord's representative and that he comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, yes. There must be a divine encounter with God before a person can be sent out by the Lord. 
God must call and equip them before they go in faith, before they go forth. They must be an appointment by God. There must be an appointment by, by God. It is God who calls you to lead, not man. When man gives you that credential, what that credential says is that they see leadership qualities that are already established in you. Now, some people, when they get that credential, what they do, they go mad. Some people are destroyed by elevation. They can't handle it. They get the big head. They start to swing their hips every which way and make a, make a mess of the whole kitchen. They throw down all of the pantry, the cake, the bake, the bread. Why? Because their head got so big, they are overbalanced now. They are knocking everything down because they got some level of elevation. Some people cannot handle promotion. Credentials destroy them. They got the big title and they develop a bigger attitude. And nobody can talk to them after that. There are two things that test a person's metal and tells you who they are. Trials and elevation. And I've seen elevation destroy more people than trials. Because they couldn't handle the big title that they wanted. When they got it, they got attitude with it. There are ways that a person can be appointed to an office. First, God can appoint them. Second, Man can appoint them. Third, they can appoint themselves. Or fourth, Satan can push them and send them off into destruction. Remember, Satan always gives you today what God wants to give you tomorrow. Satan always gives you now what God wants to give you just now. See, you get the point. He wants you to be ahead of God's timing. Because as long as you're ahead of God's timing... You're out of the will of God. And when you're out of the will of God, you are launched for the demonic world. They know. They know that you are ahead of your time. You jump the gun. In the Old Testament, there was a man named Korah. Korah, Datan, and Abiram. Gisham, the Arabian. Korah was a self-appointed leader. He had the big fat head and he decided, I'm the brightest bulb in this house. Why can't I take leadership? He didn't wait on God. He didn't even wait on man. He appointed himself. How many of you know people like that? How many of you are people like that? <laughs> a self-appointed leader takes upon himself the authority and responsibility of a spiritual office into which he has not been divinely called. And he gives himself these names like doctor. He is not qualified, but he gives himself the big name like apostle. He gave himself the big name, like Chief Prophet. I saw a little thing on Facebook recently with a gentleman from a certain nation that I know, wink, wink. And they call him the eminent and preeminent prophet of the nation. And I'm thinking to myself, what prophecy did he bring to the nation ever? Never, not one. But he's an eminent prophet in the nation. And we destroy people by giving them titles that they have no gift in. Prophets and they don't prophesy. But they are the most eminent prophet in the nation. We need to stop flattering people. We need to stop flattering people. A self-appointed leader takes upon himself the authority and responsibility of a spiritual office into which he has not been divinely called. You can't give yourself the name and you can't keep a name when, you have, when ties have been severed with you. If you are a prophet in an organization and you are no longer a part of that organization, you can no longer call yourself a prophet. Some other group of people have to see the grace of God in you and then pronounce on that grace that they have seen. You can't self-pronounce. The man Korah is an Old Testament example of a self-appointed leader. In Numbers 16 and 17, you should read Numbers 16 and 17. It provides a background and history of his story. Korah rebelled against the divinely appointed leader Moses 
and try to advance himself. There are people that love to push themselves. They love to promote themselves. They love to politic. They love to politic. They love to poly lie to get themselves to where they are. Remember George Bush Sr.? No new taxes. And the first thing he did was to tax the people up to Wazoo. And so they voted him out the next time around. Read my lips. No new taxes. <laughs> when they want to get into power, politicians does lie. He lie, he lie, he lie, the president lie. <laughs> we know that to be true. Korah rebelled against the divinely appointed leadership of Moses and tried to advance himself as the leader. He followed a clearly defined process of self-appointment, which anyone will follow in pursuing a position into which God has not called them. When God has not called people, these are the things that they will do to self-promote, to get into the office. We have many people pastoring churches now that self-promoted, started scandal on the senior pastor, got him kicked out, and got his job, even though they have no grace for it, they have no ability in it, they have no anointing for it. They have no plan for it except to be in charge and to boss and bully people around. They got the office by lies. They got the office by lying. They got the office by innuendos and scandals and destroying someone's credibility so that they can look nice. Number one. Number 16 and 3 to number 16 and 11. He caused others to rise up against the existing leader. He stirred up trouble for the existing leader. Anybody who you see is constantly finding fault with a divinely appointed leader, it is because they want the man's job. Anybody who's constantly criticizing someone, they want that person's job or they are downright jealous of the person. Jealousy and ambition. Now ambition is good, but this kind of ambition, no. He caused others to rise up. And you have got to be careful not to dance to people's tune because they came to you giving you rumors about someone, giving you innuendos about someone. Watch people who are always the critic. And they're trying to get you, they're recruiting you as a vote against that person. Don't get into anyone's politics. If you want the job, don't try to get me to be a part of pulling someone else's someone else down. I'm not interested in that. I'm too busy with my own life. I love to drink water and mind my own business. I don't want to hear. He caused others. And the others don't seem to have a leg to stand on, or a brain to think with, that somebody can come yesterday and tell you about a man, Moses, that you knew, who stood up to Pharaoh for you, did all these miracle signs and wonders by God's grace, parted the Red Sea and got you out, got water from the rock, got the clothes on your back to stay young and fresh forever, won so many battles for you, went to talk to God for you, came back with the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone, for you and here is this man who you never knew coming to tell you how bad moses is i am always amazed at people that you can know for 30 plus years and here is a stranger that they knew for two minutes and that stranger can tell them something about you that's negative and they believe the stranger that they don't know rather than you that they know those people i mark them and I avoid them like a plague. I mark them. And I avoid them. Because I know they have a heart of a Judas. And they are looking to betray. And for 30 pieces of silver, they will do it again. I mark them. And I avoid them like a plague. There are people, I want to meet them in heaven, not on earth. I'm done with that. I want to meet them in heaven. They have caused enough mischief for a lifetime. 
and I'm not going to be a participant in their drama anymore. He caused others to rise up against the existing spiritual leader. This is where that scripture comes in. Touch not the Lord's anointed, the existing spiritual leader. God put them there. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophets no harm. What you need to do is tell these people, yo, 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 stop, stop. You see that man there? My family and I have to live off of what he is preaching and teaching when we come to church. Don't poison my water. If you don't like what he's doing, find yourself another church. Don't stay here and stir up trouble because I have to live off of what he is preaching. I have to drink what he's pouring out. Don't contaminate my well. And you are to run these rebels off. You are to run them off. Don't let the past have to hear about it. You tell them to go to another church. Stop coming here because you're, you're poisoning my water. My, my wife and I have to drink and our children have to drink from what that man is preaching. So don't come to this church. Don't stay in this church. I'm telling you I don't want you here. Leave. Yes, leave. You're still here? <laughs> gone to the gone, gone. Will you be gone? Yeah. Gone to the gone, gone. Will you be gone? Gone to the gone, gone to the gone, gone. Will you be gone? Do like a banana and split. <laughs> Owie! Number two. He publicly criticized and questioned the existing leadership by saying, you take too much upon yourself, seeing that the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. You see that? He questioned and publicly criticized the existing leadership by saying, number one, you take too much upon yourself. Now, now number one is, Moses did not take too much upon himself. It was God who put him there. And then he says the next thing, seeing the congregation are holy, every one of them. That's a principle of equivalence. A principle of equivalency. What that means is that there are people in a church, in a business, that assume that you and them have the same ability, that you and them have the same anointing, that you and them have the same grace, the same gift, the same ability, the same capacity, and that's a lie. Each star, the Bible says, has its own glory. Each star has its own glory. Each one is a star, but each star does not shine with the same level of brilliance. And people have got to know that. And sometimes you've got to say that. We are all at the same place in terms of salvation. But when it comes to ministration, we are not at the same place. You are not equal to me. And this is not being arrogant and boastful. This is just knowing the scripture. There are diversities of operations. But it is the same God. But there are differences of administration. We are different, different, different. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. We are different, different, different. It's not the same call. We are different. It's not the same weight. We are different. It's not the same gun. A 45 and a 32 and a Derringer are three different guns. All are guns, but they are different in their power. We are not the same gun. I might be an assault rifle. I might be an anti-aircraft gun. We are not the same gun. Not because we are all spelled G-U-N. It means that we all carry the same caliber of bullets and the same type of power. We are not the same. The law of equivalency says, I can do what pastor is doing. And many have tried to do it only to embarrass themselves. Pastor, I got a word. You know, I got a word. I got a word. You get them to preach. Five minutes later, their sermon is done. And it was five minutes of pure disaster. Because of their self-importance and pride. Because of their pomposity and arrogance. Not everybody who wants to minister is arrogant, but some are. The congregation are holy, every one of them. He is deciding what is holy and what is not. So he can give the people high marks. He is a prince of flattery and perverted praise. He is the prince of flattery and perverted praise. False leaders are always flatterers and charmers. They always tell people what they want to hear. 
Their sermons are filled with platitudes and ponderosity. Sweet talk. That's all it is. Ice cream sermon. Gobbly gook. No reproof. No rebuke. No exhortation. Just nice platitude. I see the Lord sending you a blue Mercedes. It's a dark blue. I see it. It's a 2024 blue Mercedes Benz. Give the Lord a round of applause. Everybody start clapping. That's all they see. Things. He publicly criticized Moses and introduced the principle of equivalency where everybody is equal to the next. It's like today's school children. One and one and they answer seven. And the teacher puts a star there and gives them all a prize. Nobody fails anymore. Our school system is turning our children <laughs> into people who are unable to face society and to face real life because everybody's not going to give them a star when they come out on the job market. But in today's school, everybody pass. Everybody gets a star. And even those who don't know one and one is two, they get a star too. And if they answer 17, they get a star on 17. We are promoting nonsense in the school system, in the educational system of today. The Lord is among them. He's invoking the Lord. That's another thing with false prophets and false leaders. They are super spiritual and they're always dropping, the Lord told me, the Holy Spirit told me, the Holy Spirit showed me, the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit, the Holy Spirit this, the Holy Spirit that, the Holy Spirit this, the Holy Spirit that, the Lord this, the Lord that, and you can, you can literally feel the irritation in your spirit when they talk because it is God's way of conveying to you, I did not tell them that. I did not show them that. I did not say that. But he always telling you that. As an apostle, sometimes I meet with pastors and today's pastors, 9 out of 10 of them, they don't take any advice. They always tell you, I'm going to seek the Lord about that. And the thing is, when they seek the Lord, the Lord always tell them something that's unscriptural. And they come back to you with it. The Lord show me this, and the Lord show me that, and the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that. And you're trying to save them the pain. You tell them, that's not the Lord. And I'm telling you now, don't go there. Don't do it. They go ahead and do it. They go ahead and do it. And then when it turns sour, they want you to come with a bottle of perfume. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy on us and bless us Number three So number one He caused others to rise up against Moses Number two He criticized and questioned the existing leadership Now some people ask a question To get an answer But not all questions are asked to get an answer Some questions are asked to create a doubt as to your credibility and character and honesty. And you ought to know the difference in those questions. Sometimes people ask a question and I just have to sit back and say, Hmm! And then smile. But what that hmm means, I know you're not asking that question to get an answer because you very well know the answer. You're asking it to make the people suspicious of something that doesn't exist and didn't happen. You're trying to create doubt now. That's why you ask that question. But of course you can't say that because everybody is not at the same place mentally and intellectually. And if you were to say it like that, they'll be shocked like, whoa, I thought Deaconess was asking that question because they are concerned about the church. People always pretend to be concerned about the church, concerned about the leadership, concerned about the growth of the church, concerned about the health of the church, concerned about the location of the church. Let me tell you something. Nobody can be more concerned about the health, location, and growth of the church than the pastor. Nobody. You want to see it grow? I want to see it grow 20 times more than you. You want to see it move? I want to see it move 50 times more than you want to see it move. As somebody told me, he said, Reverend Essiboom, you know, man, you know, you're a good teacher of the word, you're a good preacher, man, but you know, you, you keep the thing too straight, man. You, you, this holiness thing, you know, you know, this holiness thing, man. If you slack up that thing, you get a lot of people coming to your church. But all of your men are married to their wives and faithful to their wives and 
everybody can live like that, man. You know, everybody, you know, we are all sinners and we all, we all, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, and you keep a tight ship. And I want to come to your church, man, but you got to slacken up. You got to slacken up. You, you can't be that rigid. You're too rigid and old fashioned. Preach, you know, preach softer sermons and we will come. We're planning to come, but, but we, we feel, we feel like you're throwing hints at us when we come there. Something burns in us. We don't like the kind of thing that you do. You preach with too much fire. Calm down and we will come. So I must water down the gospel to accommodate these people's wickedness. They want to turn the house of God into a place of evil. And I must accommodate that devil is a liar. Christ did not call me to pacify the flesh of men. Are you feeling me now? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. I have taken people from our church. Put them in my van. Drove them to another church. Introduced them to the pastor. And told the pastor, this person wants to be a part of your church. Get their phone number and everything else. And from next week, they'll be coming to your church. I drew, I didn't wait for them to get an Uber. I Ubered them to the other congregation. And the pastor is shocked and they're shocked like, whoa, what are you doing, Rev? I'm introducing you to your new pastor. <laughs> Some of you don't believe a word I'm saying, but I did it before. Told him where to go, what church to go. Led them there. Took them up to the pastor. Introduced them. <laughs> Number three. Number 16 and 3. He accused leadership of what he himself was guilty of. I saw one of Putin's high-ranking official, an ambassador. And he was saying how Russia had to really fight off uh, Ukraine because Ukraine started a war against Russia and he said it with a straight face and the entire audience broke out in laughter he was accusing the Ukrainians of doing what Putin did it was Vladimir who started a war not Vladimir both of them named Vladimir <laughs> it was Russia that started a war not Ukraine but the guy is saying Ukraine started a war when I hear uh, Putin giving his speech. I wonder which universe he's from. He's accusing America of starting the war. He's accusing... <laughs> if you don't know what you're about today, you'll believe the lie because the lie is bold and told with a dry face. This man, Cora, accused Moses of what he himself was guilty of. When you hear people pointing fingers at others, the thing that they are accusing that person of doing... That is what they are doing. He accused Moses of doing what he was guilty of doing. Number four. He was not satisfied with the position that he had been given. And he continually wanted more and more authority and a higher position. Numbers 16 and 10. He was not satisfied with where he was. He wanted a higher and higher position. He was never satisfied. He constantly wanted greater authority because he wants to run the show. There are people like that. They undermine the supervisor. They undermine the boss. They undermine the leader because they want a higher position. They want greater authority. They want a fatter paycheck. And they will pull the rug from under people's feet so that they can get what they want. They would lie and cheat and steal to get what they want. They would make promises to people. One politician was saying of another one that he's a dictator. This guy is a dictator. He's a dictator. And when he got into office, he is more a dictator than the guy he was accusing. He is a bully and a dictator and a liar. And the guy he was accusing of being a dictator was no such thing. But the people were riled up. Get rid of this dictator. Now they got dictatorship the likes of which they have never seen before. Wicked men, when they want to lead, usually accuse the leadership of the wickedness that they themselves are doing. 
when people come to you with rumors about someone, watch them in the eye. <laughs> and be very suspicious of what they're saying because they want to lead. That's why they're lying on the person who is in charge. When people are criticizing, it comes from a spirit of the demonic world. They want to have greater position. They are not satisfied being a deacon. They want to be the one appointing deacon. They are not satisfied to be the assistant. They are the one who wants to be in charge. They are not satisfied to be the district leader. They want to be the national leader. They are not satisfied to be the national leader. They want to be the global leader. I started Global Network of Apostles and Prophets and when I send a message to Global Network of Apostles and Prophets, it is knocked off because somebody has hijacked Global Network of Apostles and Prophets. And I, who was the founder, can get on on my own page. Somebody wanted that thing. They don't want to do the work to start from scratch. But now that we've got 700 plus, they want to jump on there and take control. But let me send you a warning right now. I am not a pushover. Don't see me laughing here and singing and think that I'm some pushover. I'm not a pushover. And I promise you this much. We're taking back what the devil has stolen from us. We're taking back everything in the name of Jesus. Satan, you're a liar and a thief. And this is what I want you to know. You were defeated over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it back. No matter what you do, I'm going to take it back. No matter what you do, I'm going to take it back. I am in charge of that thing. I started that thing. I built up that thing from scratch to where it is. Myself and uh, Apostle Gaspar in New York... We were the ones that worked on that thing from day one. You're not going to have it. I'm taking it back from you. You could do all the tricks you know. I'm taking it back. I make a solemn promise on this live that I'm taking back Global Network of Apostles and Prophets from whoever has it. You're not going to get it. You picked the wrong man to fight. I don't pick fights and I don't lose fights. Ha, 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 ha. Some of you look and say, whoa, I thought he was a nice guy. I am a nice guy. Until you mess with my other side, and then I've got to take off the velvet glove and show the iron fist and make promises like, I'm going to take it back. And when I take it back, I will announce it to the world. I got my stuff back. I can promote stuff there, and nobody kicks it off two seconds after I put it on. Global Network of Apostles and Prophets was the initiative of Apostle and Apostle Essie Bowman Gaspar. I'm going to take it back. You can't have it. Number five. He continued to murmur against the existing leadership. Number 16 and 11. The epistle of Jude in verse 11 refers to these three men as examples of false ministries. Cain, Balaam, and Korah. And Jude states that in the last days, some men will go the way of Cain, the way of Balaam, and the way of Korah. The world, in other words, will be filled with false ministry. The way of Korah is a man who will appoint himself to a divine office without the call of God. There are many self-appointed pastors around the church and in businesses and in nations. Self-appointed. Even though it's against the constitution, they still take up the high spot, knowing fully well that the laws of the land says, you can't have that role. That role is to that guy over there. They take the role anyhow and play the role anyhow. And the opposition have a lot of bark, but no bite. He represents the self-will and presumptuous men who want authority that has not been given to them by God. They rise up against the God-ordained leadership as Korah did against Moses. The next kind of leader we will look at is the man-appointed leader. And I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm just giving you a taste of what is to come. And so, 
<laughs> I'm still smiling. Some of you get nervous when I said I'm going to take back Global Network of Apostles and Prophets. It's mine. I'm not going to have anybody take it. Don't worry about that. It's done already. It's done. It's done before it's done, but it's done. I'm sending out warnings to all and sundry. You can't have it. You have to start your own. You can't have it. N to the O, O, to the O, O, O. <laughs> N to the O, O, to the O, O, O. N to the O. N to the O, O, to the O, O, O. You can't have it. N to the O, O. And I'm laughing. Leadership is critical. Leadership is crucial. Wherever we are now, our leaders let us hear. The war between Ukraine and Russia, our leaders let us hear. The pandemic that messed the world up and killed off millions of people, our leaders let us hear. The financial crisis that they are planning and the economic and global reset, our leaders let us there. The inability to travel without their joke. Our leaders let us there. All of the problems you see in the nations of the world were created by leaders who let us here. Our leaders let us here. When you see garbage piled high in the nation, our leaders let us there. When you see uh, drivers going at 150 miles an hour, in a 40 zone, killing people like nobody's business every year. Three, four hundred people die on the roads and a small nation. Our leaders led us there. People have to fly out to another country for a headache or a toothache. Why? Our leaders, when they have bellyache, they fly to Miami. Our leaders led us there. When you see the planes come into the country and leave without your suitcase and two, three, four weeks after... They refuse to repay you for all the losses that you took on their airlines and they are flying back to that country without any, any sort of a fine levied upon them. Our leaders, our world is in a crisis for good, top-notch, top-quality leaders. Leadership is our number one problem in the world. Say what? I'm going to say it slowly. Good quality leaders are our number one problem on a global scale. We have some of the most suspect leaders on the planet in charge of nations and corporations. Our world is in a crisis and our number one need in the world is top quality leaders, good leadership. Wherever we are as a global society, our leaders have led us here. If the church doesn't pray, we are going to see protests in Nigeria. The youths will come out in large numbers to protest the last general elections that they had. Because they are going to be talking about fraud and all the rest of it. It's likely that the results will be decided by a court system. You all need to pray. Why? Our leaders. Our leaders led us there. And globally, every problem that the world has, when there is health crisis in a nation, hospital crisis in a nation, absence of doctors in the nation, education going to hell in a handbasket, all of those are problems that are caused by the leaders. When our court system is a mess and our judges and magistrates are taking bribes left, right, and center, where did it come from? Leadership. Our leaders led us there. Wherever you are right now, somebody led you there. Or the somebody is you. You led yourself to that place. And if you're going to get out of it, if you're going to get out of the mess, you're going to have to develop a different kind of leader. Your mind is going to need to change. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you can't lead, you won't lead. The man who says he's right and the man who says he's wrong, they are both right. They are both right. 
You're going to have to introduce yourself to the new leader. Who? You! Look in the chair that you're sitting in and tell that person, you're the best leader I know. Let's go. Look in the chair where you're sitting and tell that person sitting in that chair, you're the best leader I know. You are the best leader I know. If you're going to get out of the crisis, you're going to have to lead yourself out of it. You have to become the leader that you hoped for, wished for, prayed for, voted for. You're going to have to become that leader. I used to be looking for spiritual fathers in my younger days. And after a while, after being hit on the head a couple of times, I decided I'm going to become the spiritual father I can't find around me. I'm going to be that man that I've been looking for to mentor me. I'm going to have to mentor me and I'm going to have to pick some mentors out there and use their books and CDs and stuff as their method and means of mentoring. They're going to mentor me and don't even know it. And I did it. I succeeded at it. I became the mentor that I wanted in my own life. Now, I'm trying to not take in any more mentees. <laughs> because I give it time. And I answer their question. I answer their call. No matter what hour of the day or night they call. I pick up that phone if it's one of them. But a brother is becoming tired now. I can't handle all of these people. I want to hand them over to somebody else. But there are some that the Lord said, I want you to be with this one until I tell you otherwise. Leadership is the greatest need of our world. That's why our world needs you, Wardy Dixon. I am the best leader I know. Yes. You've got to have that kind of mentality. And so, on Monday night, we are going to launch our leadership training. I hope that all of the leaders in churches that I have anything to do with are going to be participating. And don't talk to me about 100 U.S. is, is steep. For six months, 100 U.S. is the greatest deal you could ever have with the quality of stuff that you're going to hear. Invest in yourself for a change and stop wanting everything for free. Or oh, Rabbi, I thought you'd talk to me nice to get me to, um, to do your leadership training. No, I'm not. I'm going to talk to you straight up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you your eyes black or your eyes brown. Look, invest in yourself. Stop going the cheap way. Stop going and listening to all these preachers just because you're getting it free. Knuckle down for the next uh, six months. For the next 26 hours minimum. It's going to be more than 26 hours. Because I've already done four teachings on leadership in the last four sit-downs that we have had. So that's 30 hours. And I'm going to be doing more than that. There will be days. For instance, uh, Midday Mana is going to be on. I'll be teaching on leadership there too. Morning, during the morning hours, I used to have a program in the morning, one in midday, one in the, in the night. I'm, in some, some weeks, I'm going to be having that. Oh, yes. I'm going to flood Facebook and Zoom with teachings on leadership. Now, listen to me carefully. This teaching that we're going to do will be done on Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. It's going to be done on Zoom. The training, the leadership training will be done on Zoom. You're going to get the Zoom information, how you can hook up. Some of you are going to be working at that time. 7 p.m. is 8 p.m. elsewhere. 7 p.m. here on Monday is Sunday morning in some places. It's Monday afternoon in some places. It's, it's Tuesday morning in some places due to the global timing. We, we have gone global now, so we can't expect that everybody will be at 7 o'clock. But I've set that time. And those who cannot make the time, we will send the teaching to you, to your email address, to your page, to your messenger, to your ya ya re re. The good thing is we have ways of doing it now that is easy. So you have no excuse. 
You have no excuse. What I'm trying to do is to eradicate every excuse. Say, well, I don't have 100 U.S. now. Well, you're going to have it before March is out. So you can still join. Join on Monday. I trust you enough. You don't think you're worth 100 U.S.? You're that dishonest that you're going to join something and get all the teaching and not pay the registration fee? You're going to need deliverance. I'll come to your nation and lay hands on you to get that lying spirit out of you and that cheap, cheap demonic spirit of poverty from off of you. Invest in yourself. You see how my face is straight while I'm saying it? I have no qualms about saying it. I will not apologize for saying it. Invest in yourself. I have been investing in you all for years. Teaching three times a day for an entire year. And twice a day for years. Free. Well, the time has come now. I'm testing you to see how far you've come, how much you have grown, or if you think you're worth a hundred US dollars. I know you're worth it, but you have got to know. The investment says, I know I'm worth it too. Now, towards this end, there are some people, I have been, <laughs> it's amazing. I got uh, three people called me, said, Rev, I am going to be a participant in your training, and I want to sponsor two people. I'm going to be a participant in your training. I want to sponsor three people. People have said that. And the guy who said he wants to sponsor two people, he, he went immediately in that nation and handed the money over to the person that's there. And when they were not home, he got a hold of their son and gave it to him and told him, give it to the person when they come. They're not playing. They know. So, oh, Rev, you know, I, I know what you give, man. I know you're going to bring it. I know, I know we're in for a good time. I know we're going to learn some stuff. I know I can learn more from you in an hour than I learned for months at that church that I'm going. But don't tell nobody I said that, so I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> How are we? So, if you want to sponsor somebody, that's good too. So, well, I can't sponsor somebody. I don't have that kind of money. Can you sponsor halfway? Two of you come together and sponsor halfway. You see how I'm trying to bend backwards to make it easy so that everybody can be in the teaching. Not when we're done, you're crying that you wish you were on. You don't wish you were on. If you want to be on, you can be on. There's no excuse to this one. There's no excuse because we are bending. I have bent like a pretzel right now. I'm surprised that my head is still on straight on my neck. I've been bending sideways to accommodate all kinds of people with, and some of them, I know them, and I know it's just a lousy excuse that they're making. I know them to be people of more integrity than that. But it seems like the pandemic has turned some people into liars. I'm not calling anybody a liar. I said I'm blaming the pandemic. It seems like some people have learned to lie. Use that as an excuse. But, we are trying to accommodate everybody. And uh, at the end, we are issuing a diploma in leadership. Our stuff is accepted. Don't worry with these people that say it's not worth the paper that is printed on. They're just jealous that it wasn't their idea. <laughs> Our stuff works. We have people that come to the airport here in Canada and they pull out their credentials and yeah, we know we know that group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go. S C Boom, right? Yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. You, go on, go on. They know. They call. Uh, Reverend, yes. We have a gentleman here. His name is, and I will tell them the name. Because I was expecting a person. Yes. He is here with his wife. And he's got some kids here with him. Yes, there are three. And I named the kids. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what's the guy's name? I give them the guy's name. They say, all right, all right, we are just testing you. Because they said they are with you. Yes, they are with me. They are good people. What do you want me to do? Can you come and pick them up? Because the taxis are all gone. I'll be there in half an hour. 20 minutes later, I'm there. <laughs> Thank God the cops didn't come behind me and give me a speedy ticket. Pick them up and say, what, do you, what, 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 what did you do to make the people hold you up at the airport? And we didn't do nothing. I don't know why they held us up. Our credentials work across the world. And anything we give and put into your hands, 
it works. It's not some paper that's not worked, the ink that's printed there. Don't worry with people. They're lying to you because they don't have a, an, a new idea. They don't have a fresh idea in their brain. And every two minutes, this guy that they can't stand seems to be coming up with another idea. Leadership training, man. We are where we are because our leaders led us here. And if we are going to go to a brighter tomorrow, we're going to need a fresh batch of leaders. That's you. That's me. God bless. The boom is out.